Feel like you're being pulled in a thousand directions? Let's fix that. Download your free rebalancing toolkit and learn how to design an optimized week that lets you feel like you have it all. Get the goods at brilliantbalance.net slash have it all. I'm Sherilyn Skolnicki, and this is Brilliant Balance, the show for working women who are ready to shine. Each week, I bring you ideas, inspiration, and insight on balance, business, and getting it all done gracefully. You ready? Let's be brilliant. You're listening to episode 53 of the Brilliant Balance podcast. And my friends, this is the first episode in year two of the show. I cannot even believe it. This year feels like it has gone so quickly, on my side at least. A year ago, this whole thing was just a glimmer of a dream. And now, you know, we have thousands of people listening in to this show, and it's just been extraordinary to watch how it has unfolded. I am so grateful to each and every person who has listened, whether you've listened to one episode, whether you've binge listened to a whole bunch of them, whether you hop in and out of being a part of this community. I'm just so grateful to each of you who has listened to an episode Importantly, to those of you who have acted on something that you have learned from an episode, and really especially grateful to those of you who have shared with me something that you learned from that episode or what your experience has been. You know, it takes an extra minute to give somebody whose work you appreciate that feedback. And I don't take that for granted. In the busy world that we live in, when you take time to send me a note or especially to write a review of the show or rate it, comment on it, It means a lot because I know how hard it is to take that extra minute to do that. I want to say thank you for that. And thank you for being on this ride with me for a whole year already. You know, we are heading into year two with momentum, with a lot of energy for the ideas that I want to share next and where we want to take this podcast. So buckle up. It's going to be a really fun year too. And I really, really just want to say thank you for being with me for all of year one. So I have to admit today, I am still a little bit high from the client event that I hosted last week. My energy is like between the podcast anniversary and the client event, I think I'm I'm levitating a little bit. Um, I had this awesome opportunity to gather the women who have been a part of my, really my signature coaching program. It's the one we call Breakthrough. And also the people who've been a part of our follow-up program, which we call BOLD. And BOLD stands for Building Out Legacies and Dreams. So we gathered that whole crew in Cincinnati and had the opportunity to have everybody in one room, well, as many people as were able to travel, right? We got that group together and it was just a blast. Like I was so excited about doing it. I was nervous, as you'll recall from last week, before we started planning the event. But once we hit our stride and started to really feel the energy from the women who were planning to come in, you know, that shifted straight into excitement and actually getting to have the event exceeded really all of my expectations. It was just so incredible to have so many of us in one room. And what people kept saying was the energy was amazing. You know, we've had a relationship almost entirely in a virtual environment. You know, many of them were podcast listeners or followers of the blog, you know, or followers on Facebook or followers on Instagram. Like they're connecting in these virtual ways. And then to go through the whole experience of breakthrough, which is delivered virtually, right? So that we can serve women all over the place. It's a great energy in that group, but there is just nothing that compares to getting to be in the same room, to give those hugs and high fives and and look somebody in the eyes and tell the stories. It was just, um, it was a ride. And I think all of us just kept saying, you know, we need more of this. We need more things in life that feel like this. And so my team and I have lots of ideas bubbling about what that might look like for us, but I also think it's just really an incredible opportunity when you're able to gather with those like-minded people and share, in this case, a couple of days, really dreaming about what's possible. 
And that's what we're going to do a little bit of today. You know, what I, what I want to do today is ride that energy and talk about adventure. The question that I'm posing in this episode is, you know, what happened to your sense of adventure? When's the last time you had an adventure? And the reason I'm asking this question is, I think as I connect with a lot of women at midlife, right, whether you're in your 40s, which is probably our core audience, in your 30s, in your 50s, like those shoulders of that age, the questions that are starting to surface is like, what happened to me? You know, I used to I used to do all kinds of stuff and I feel like I've become kind of boring. Or maybe I've just become so busy, I'm kind of like drowning under this sea of responsibilities and because of that, the idea of adventure is just it's a distant memory. You know, that's something I used to do when I was younger or it's something maybe I'll do again in the future, but it really doesn't seem to fit into this chapter of life. I think it's important that we confront that pattern, first of all, and then really decide with intention, what do we want to do about it? When I think about adventure in this context, I think about my friend Aaron. Aaron is one of those people who is always up for an adventure, always has been, probably always will be. I first realized this about her when we were in grad school and we were both getting an MBA. She was working for one company, I was working for another, and she made a decision to quit her job and take a full year off to travel around the world, like literally, right? A full year (laughs) and travel around the world. So she bought, it's called an around the world plane ticket, I think. She bought this plane ticket where you can keep going as long as you're always moving in one direction. Like if you keep going east, right, you can keep using that plane ticket. I don't even know if this exists anymore, but it existed when this happened, which was about probably almost 20 years ago. And she took off on this adventure with the love of her life, who is now her husband. And in that trip, they visited multiple continents, many countries. She lived out of one backpack. And as the stories go, lots and lots of peanut butter and spaghetti, right? But they did this trip where the entire year was just devoted to that adventure. And I will tell you that I thought she was flat out crazy when she made the decision to do this. I was very focused on advancing my career at that time. I was very focused on sort of following a very predictable and traditional path to success markers at predicted times. And I thought she was crazy. And as I look back on it now, it's so clear to me that she saw something I could not see at that time, which was that there was this window of time available to her to capture a really extended period of adventure and that the rest of it would always be waiting. You know, she could come back to the rest of it whenever she wanted. And this is not the only thing this woman has done. You know, later, she would run a 56-mile race. It's called an ultra marathon. She didn't just do one. She did one in South Africa. It's this very famous race called Comrades. People come from all over the world to run it. So, you know, she just decides, I'm going to fly to South Africa and do this 56-mile race. And and let me say, she is a lifelong runner. She has done many, many, many marathons. I think I've lost count at this point of how many traditional marathons she's done. But this was um, a goal for her. And then when it was time for her to get married to the guy who she went around the world with, they invited everyone else into the adventure because they decided to get married on Santorini, which is an island in the Greek islands. And she requested you know, a small group of us to go and join them there and have this adventure. And of course, I also dug my heels in at that point. I was like, I have a six-month-old baby. I am nursing. Like, how am I possibly going to go do this? But guess what? We did it. You know, my husband and I got on a plane with a six-month-old. We flew to Santorini. We had an amazing adventure with this baby girl, you know, who we we had in London and we had in Athens and we had in Santorini all in the same trip. There are so many stories from that that we still tell because we did it. And we only did it because, you know, she created an environment where it was almost impossible for me to say no to that adventure. So this is kind of the pattern of what Erin has done in my life. She's somebody who gets you to stretch beyond your comfort zone right along with her. In fact, this is I'll only tell one more story about Erin. But in 1999, we were in grad school and she decided that actually we may have just graduated, but she decided that we should fly to Pasadena 
to see the Women's World Cup finals. They were being played in the U.S., and the U.S. team was in the finals. Those being played in the Rose Bowl Stadium. Now, mind you, neither one of us played soccer. This wasn't like – we're not like big soccer fanatics. This was just about having an adventure. And this was also back in the days of – frequent flyer miles coming out your ears. Like we were both traveling a lot for work. We had a bazillion frequent flyer miles. So we went kind of on a whim, got tickets to the game. And of course, you know where the story ends. We were there to see the U.S. team win, right, the most attended women's sports event in history. To this day, it is the highest attended women's sporting event in history, I believe. And the U.S. team won, and it's, you know, that classic moment where Brandi Chastain rips off her shirt after she scores the winning penalty kick. Like, just an extraordinary experience, all made possible because, you know, I had someone in my life who was kind of poking me, saying, hey, let's have an adventure. Feel like you're being pulled in a thousand directions? Let's fix that. Download your free rebalancing toolkit and learn how to design an optimized week that lets you feel like you have it all. Get the goods at brilliantbalance.net slash have it all. So my question to you today is, when is the last time you had an adventure? Something that made your heart sing, you know, something that made your skin tingle and something that you had a high level of anticipation about, one that you're still maybe telling stories about, right? One where you laughed so hard or you cried so hard or so often that it's just really memorable, where you were fully out of your day-to-day life, the rhythm of your everyday, the chores and the responsibilities and the work, and you were actually fully in the experience. You know, the stories that I just told, I mean, there are obviously highlights for me. The One of the more recent ones that I think back to is, and I think I told this story on the podcast, we, a couple of years ago on spring break, took our family to California. And my husband had this idea to take everybody sea kayaking. And the kids had been in kayaks, but they'd been, they had not been in the ocean in kayaks. And he had this idea to take everybody sea kayaking in La Jolla. It was just a two-hour adventure. You know, it wasn't like a big week-long experience. But man, what a rush. And I have to tell you, on that whole trip of all the things that we did, and we packed a lot into a week, that is one of the things that the kids really talk about again and again. And so do so do we because it was different. It was something we hadn't done before. It really it was an adventure. Sort of an adventure inside of an adventure, maybe, but it's one that we come back to again because the sort of adrenaline level or the excitement level, the memorability was way above the norm. So I want you to think for a minute about what was your adventure? What is the last time that you can remember that you did something that you would really categorize as an adventure? And here's the thing if you can't think of one, I want you to really pay attention to that. Because without adventure, you know, life kind of gets lived with the dimmer switch on. And when we're living that way, when we're just in the routine and the humdrum of the everyday, we lock up our creativity and our vision. So when you look back on your life, it's punctuated by these adventures. And without them, the days and the weeks and the months and the years, they kind of run together. Like it becomes like a blur. And so my invitation to you today is to think about what would you like to do? What have you been dreaming of? You know, what have you been sort of secretly plotting and planning in the back of your mind? And if there isn't anything, if you, you know, if your answer to that question is, I'm not sure I'm doing that, Cheryl Ann, then I really want you to pause. Pause as soon as you finish this podcast or pause in the middle of this podcast and really give some thought to some dreams that you have, to some things that you may want to do. So when I was getting ready for this episode, I asked the women in my breakthrough program, what are some of theirs? What are some of the adventures that they are planning? And they flooded me with responses. And what I love about this is before they started breakthrough, they would not have flooded me with responses. These same women would have said, I don't know that I have a dream. I don't know that I have anything that I really want to do. I don't know that I have an adventure I can even think of. And through the process, they're starting to flow. 
right? The ideas are starting to surface. And not only are there ideas that are surfacing, but they're being mobilized into plans. So I, I took a little bit of time to group their responses, and I found three themes that I think these adventures kind of fall under. The first one, as you might expect, is travel. Travel is a really big deal for us. And I think it's maybe it's a metaphor. You know, I think that travel may be a giant metaphor for adventure, for this need to expand our horizons and get beyond our current life. So here are some of the uh, locations that were on the list of our breakthrough women. Antarctica. So nothing like starting with a big one, right? Antarctica, Australia, New Zealand. Um, One is Italy. She's been planning a trip with her husband to Italy. Um, A cross-country road trip across the United States. An African safari. Traveling to all major wine-producing regions in the world. Love that one. Costa Rica. I think that's a trip that's actually booked. Tokyo. This woman has traveled to Tokyo for work and now wants to take her family. Um, Thailand was another one. So the travel list went on and on. There were many examples beyond this one. But I think you know you probably can instinctively, if you can't come up with anything else, come up with a travel-related adventure that would be exciting for you. The second bucket of adventures were around learning something new, learning something new or trying something new. And so these were things like, I want to learn to play the cello. I want to complete a triathlon. I want to section hike the Appalachian Trail. I loved that one. Climbing Kilimanjaro. So I put anything that involved like you actually doing it, right? Being physically involved in the experience um, in this bucket, learning a new skill or doing something that's like you're physically in the experience. Because the third bucket was around experiencing something extraordinary, but where maybe it was a more passive experience. So like going to the Academy Awards or attending Wimbledon. Or meeting one of your heroes, you know, like meeting Oprah or meeting um, a particular celebrity or a particular author or thought leader. And there were a number of these in the group, and, and yours will be unique to you. But that notion of having an experience of something that's really extraordinary that may seem almost impossible, you know, from where you sit today. You may need some practice here to really get these ideas flowing. You might have to brainstorm with someone. Um, You might have to do some journaling. But but how fun is this to think about an adventure that you might like to have? I mean, it's a this is fun territory. (laughs) Here's where the third question comes in. The third kind of question I want to pose to you is: what would have to be true to make it happen? Because the danger I see is we have this high moment of, oh, we imagine an adventure, it would be great, and we quickly drop into, but it's never going to happen. Or at a minimum questioning, could that really ever happen? But I want you to ask a different question. The question I want you to ask is, what would have to be true for it to happen? Do you need time carved out of your schedule? You know, you're sitting here thinking, I don't know where this time comes from to section hike the Appalachian Trail. Well, I'll tell you this, the woman who has that on her list is a mother of two school-age children, and she's running a high-growth entrepreneurial venture. So it's not like she's swimming in time, right? She's going to have to carve out time for the training and for the actual experience. And here's what's interesting. She intentionally said, I'm going to section hike the trail, which means you don't do it all at once. You don't go and have months and months of hiking. You go and you do it in pieces. So they become like shorter trips. But when you sequence them all together, you have ultimately completed the trail. You know, when you start asking questions like what would have to be true, you get from, boy, it's a pipe dream to hike the trail to what would have to be true is I'd have to be able to do it in pieces. And all of a sudden you have something that can become a plan. You see the difference? What would have to be true? Do you need money? Do you need funding to be able to do one of these dreams? Yeah, it'd be great. I'd love to go to Antarctica, Sherry Land, but I don't have the money laying around to go on that trip. Okay. Maybe today you don't, but what would have to be true for you to put that on a point in the future and be in a place to finance that trip at that point. Childcare. Maybe you need to have childcare lined up. Do you need additional vacation time? Do you need to take a sabbatical from your job? Would you need to have a higher fitness level if you're going to run a triathlon or compete in a triathlon? Is there some equipment that you might need if you're going to learn to play the cello? 
when you ask the question, what would have to be true, you get into this practical side of how would you actually mobilize this adventure? And these things, they're like little mini adventures unto themselves. These are the things that warm you up for the adventure. So if you're going to do your first triathlon, I promise you, just the act of going and buying or renting or borrowing some of the equipment that you would need to compete will feel like an adventure. You know, the first time that you have that racing bike under you, the first time that you're putting on a swim cap and getting into a pool to train, those are going to feel like adventures unto themselves, even though they're in preparation for sort of the big adventure. So as you do these things, you feel it getting more and more real. You feel yourself getting closer and closer, and that's the key. Because if you just stop at the idea, if you just stop at the idea, it won't ever happen. Mobilizing that idea into the execution is what matters. That's why those women in Breakthrough, are they're not just saying, this would be great to do someday. They're saying, in 2020, I'm going to Antarctica. In 2019, this trip to Italy is happening. They have the dates. You know, things are solidifying around their plans. So this is the thing. Life is just better with adventure. My encouragement to you is, let's not be boring middle-aged women. Don't fall into the rut of, I'll do it someday, because someday is not real. Get the ball rolling now, right? So you can take the first step. Put some specificity to these adventures. Pick one. Pick a small one and actually make it happen, okay? Because the whole idea of, I'll do it someday, is dangerous, not just in adventures. It's dangerous in life, that's actually what we're going to talk about next time is, is that whole tendency to say, I'll get to it someday. So I'll unpack that with you next week. But until then, I want you to name an adventure. Get excited about something that you can put on the horizon and start to look forward to. And I would love it if you would share this episode of the podcast with a friend who needs to hear this, who needs to be inspired to get up out of her seat and go after something that really makes her heart sing. And if you liked this episode, I would love it if you would take that extra minute to rate the show, give it a star or two or three or five, um, and leave a comment on this podcast in iTunes. I love reading these comments. I am so grateful for these comments, like this recent one, which says, I am so glad I randomly found this podcast. The little nuggets of wisdom are so inspirational. Some days I listen to the podcast multiple times just for the new information I hear that I may have missed. That touches my heart. Thank you for sharing those words with me. Thank you for listening to this podcast multiple times. I mean, what a delight. I'm just excited to be on this ride with all of you. So thank you for listening. That is all we have for today. Go have an adventure. Until next time, let's be brilliant. This is the podcastfactory.com.